Steve, this report talks about uh, digital fraud and abuse. When you use those terms, how do you draw the line between cyber fraud and abuse? And why does that distinction matter for how defenders respond? So really, it, it comes back to driving attack methodology. And so, you know, as you look at this, fraud is about deception. And so when we talk about fraud, I default to something like social engineering. Uh, a classic example of where, you know, stealing an identity uh, deception would be, you know, account takeover. And that's, you know, credential stuffing. I go out, I steal your username and password. I then just try it against a bunch of different banks. And, and if it works on one of the banks, because if you're like my dad who reuses passwords uh, and has overly simple passwords, uh, then, you know, your, your password for the grocery store gets you into his bank. And so that, that kind of, of a challenge is fraud. Now, abuse is, you know, I put out a site for somebody and rather than just using it as an individual, they they query at hundreds of thousands of time and scrape all that data. Well, it's using that site in an unauthorized way. And so it's not necessarily illegal, but it is misuse. I'll give you an example here. So the publishing industry, if, if you put out a news article, and an AI goes out to search that, you know, I ask AI a question, it goes out and asks 40 news sites and brings me back the answer. Well, those are zero click searches. And that term means all those websites who sell advertising or sell membership or, or have revenue generation through people visiting them, they're all getting none of that. And so, you know, right now, 63% of AI bot triggers um, are, are against publishing industry. And, and that's just, it's really impacting revenue. It's really impacting their marketing numbers and causing those kind of problems. The last thing I want to touch on is when we talk about Gen AI or large language models, I use those terms interchangeably. You know, here is one of the things we'll talk about is protecting them. And as an a, as a as a CSO, and you and I have talked about this before, I have three problems with Gen AI. The first is I need to protect my employees using them. Could be the marketing putting out material before it should be released. Could be developers you you know putting out sensitive code in them. I have internal use where I'm buying capabilities that use it. And then I have external services. And those external services are going to be primarily what we talk about today. And a lot of this ties very closely to APIs, those machine interfaces. So now I've got a Gen AI facing publicly, and those APIs or bots are just causing huge scale. So those are some of the terms that we'll use as we go through our discussion today. 